Hi, good afternoon. My name is Joseph Ibrahim. I'm the Trauma Medical Director at Orlando Regional Medical Center here on behalf of Prytime Medical to discuss with you the steps for ER Reboa catheter placement. Uh, first of all, you want to talk about where you're going to uh, place this, who the right patient is. You want to obviously a hypotensive patient uh, who has trauma to typically the torso or the pelvic area. First of all, the most important thing to gain first is your access point. So you want some sort of sheath. We recommend for this catheter a seven French sheath in the femoral artery. The recommendation currently is for ultrasound guidance to utilize to place this catheter in the proper position to avoid placement in the SFA. You want to make sure you're in the common femoral. Next step, we're going to use an acronym called MEFIS to help you remember this easier. It stands for measure, evacuate, uh, flush, insert, inflate, and uh, finally secure. So first of all, a couple things. When we talk about measurement, we're going to measure from the P tip. As you can see here, there's a tip on this that looks somewhat shaped like a P. That's going to be what we're talking about when we say that. So talk about measurements for zone one. We're going to use our P tip on the catheter. As you see here, it's a P shaped tip to the catheter itself. Measuring from the sternal notch to our insertion point on our catheter. For our particular case, this is about 45 centimeters. Uh, for zone three, we're going to measure from the xiphoid process with the P-tip catheter to the insertion point, which for our case is about 22 centimeters. What happens if you've already got the catheter in and you failed to measure? They've actually done some studies to look at this, and the average placement for a zone one is approximately 46 centimeters. For zone three is approximately 28 centimeters. So you can place them at those locations if you fail to measure prior to insertion. So now that we've measured, we're going to evacuate our balloon. Here's the balloon on the catheter you see here just below our P-tip. Once I've got it evacuated and completely collapsed, hold that in place. Next, I'm going to go to F for flush. Prior to that, I want to slide my cheater over top of everything, twisting over the balloon to avoid any shearing. Once we've, in, we've flushed this with saline, now we're going to use our cheater to carefully insert into our femoral A-line sheath, which is about approximately a seven French sheath. Now I'm going to advance the catheter slowly. This should go very smoothly. There should be no resistance. Once I have that in place now, I'm advancing this up to my 45 centimeter mark which you see here. Typically, if you have imaging that you can do at the bedside, this is where I would take my x-ray. You can see the balloon located here in the center of zone one. Now I'm going to move forward with inflation. When I do this, I am going to look at my arterial waveform to help me determine when I've reached occlusion. That being said, you want to use your clinical expertise in doing this so that you don't overinflate the balloon. Uh, there are numbers that have been predetermined with 8 being zone 1 and 3 being for zone 3. However, again, you may need to give one or two more cc's depending on the situation and depending on your clinical assessment. So please use that as well. But in, in general, it's going to be eight, to th 8 cc's for zone 1, 3 cc's for zone 3 that you don't want to go very much over. So now as I'm inflating the balloon, I'm watching my arterial waveform. And as I see a rise in my blood pressure to a much more perfusing type pressure, I'm going to close my balloon. I've inflated approximately 60 cc's of fluid. I'm then going to move forward with securing the catheter in position. With my clasp here, you want to keep this relatively close to your sheath to avoid bowing of the catheter in between the sheath and your clasp. But you do need this. Some people are going to say, well, why do I even need that? You will get migration of the catheter if you don't. So please consider either utilizing this or having someone hold this because once that balloon is inflated, the catheter will tend to migrate somewhat. Now that we have that held in position, we'll take one final look and you see the balloon resting there in zone one with good occlusion but not over 
Thank you. Over inflation so that you don't see any bowing of the vessel wall or anything like that. Once you have the catheter in place, you really want to take no more than 30 minutes to get that catheter down. Um, beyond that time, you're running risk of having significantly higher complications and problems. So once that catheter is in, the clock is tipping, ticking, you want to make sure you either have the nurse keeping track for you or you're writing down on the sheets, on the patient somewhere, what time balloon is up and what time balloon is down so that you're keeping track of that as that is crucial to this intervention. So I want to talk with you very briefly on patient selection and contraindication for ER Reboa catheter placement. First of all, it needs to be typically a, a trauma patient is the reason we're placing these. Can be blunt, can be penetrating. Um, you need to determine what kind of injuries you may be looking at. Uh, for us particularly, you want to make sure you do your initial assessment. You want to have a chest x-ray, you want to have a pelvis, and you want to do your ultrasound and FAST exam. So with your chest x-ray, as far as contraindications, you want to make sure you're not looking at placing this in someone with a widened mediastinum. Reason being, you could create increased pressure downstream from a thoracic aortic injury. If that has uh, developed a clot on top of that, then you could, by increasing the pressure there, you could worsen that or they could lose the clot and thus turn it into a free rupture, which is something we don't want to have. So that would be an absolute contraindication with the widened mediastinum on chest x-ray. Aside from that, if you have somebody who's hypotensive, again, there are different algorithms, protocols you, that are publicly available for you to look at for this. Some say blood pressure less than 100 systolic, a systolic blood pressure less than 100. Some say less than 90. Uh, most protocols are following the less than 90 rule. So what you would want to do then is look at your FAST exam. If you have a FAST that's negative and a x-ray that shows a pelvic fracture, you probably want to go for zone 3. If you have someone that has a positive FAST, uh, hypotensive, you probably want to go for zone 1. Those would be the best indications there. And then again, you want to have a plan in place for where you're going to go once that catheter is in place, either to interventional radiology or the operative suite to de do definitive control of the hemorrhage.